Good morning, boys and girls. I'm so glad you're watching the video, and I cannot wait till we can have junior church again. I'm so excited. Maybe in a few weeks we can have it. We're going to start with praying right now. So everybody, bow your head and close your eyes. Let's talk to the Lord. Dear Jesus, I thank you for this day, and I thank you for all these kids who are watching. And I pray, Lord, that you would just be with them and lead them, guide them, and direct them and help them. And I pray, Lord, that when we can have church again, that they can come back and we can go pick up the ones that we need to pick up. And I pray, Lord, that you would just be with each one of them. And if someone here today is watching this and they don't know you as their personal Savior, I pray, Lord, that they would go to their parents or they would call Brother Larkin or me or Miss Morgan or Miss Michelle and talk to them about it. And I pray, Lord, for the ones that are saved, that they would just be a light to those around them. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we're going to do our memory verse. Okay, John three thirty six. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. The first part of the verse is uplifting. It's, it's a good part, but then shall not see life? That is so sad that somebody would not know the Lord and would not see life. That's so sad. So basically it's saying, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. So any of you who've ever asked Jesus to come in your heart, you're going to go to heaven and you're going to live forever, everlasting. It never runs out of batteries. It always works. It, it never goes away. You'll be with the Lord forever. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. That's, that's the sad part. So we, the ones that do know Jesus, should go and tell others about him so they can go to heaven and see life again. So if you know someone like that, you need to talk to them and tell them about how you asked Jesus to come in your heart and how that you're going to live forever. I mean, we all going to die on earth physically, but we don't have to die spiritually. We can go to heaven when we die. So let's go. You say what I say. You say what I say. John three thirty six. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not. Let's see. You say it. You say it with me now. John three thirty six. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. Now y'all need to work on that, and any of y'all that can come back next week, or whenever we have church, not next week, Whenever we have church, and if you can say this verse to Miss Mandy or to somebody else, you will get a prize. I want y'all to work on this. Y'all at home, y'all don't have a lot to do. Well, maybe school, but I want y'all to work on this verse. Hi, guys. We are going to talk about what happened on that Sunday after Jesus died. Now, a couple of Jesus' followers were headed home to Emmaus, which was about seven miles away from Jerusalem. And as they walked and they talked, they were really sad because they started thinking about the things that had happened to Jesus the last couple of days. I mean, he rode into this triumphant entry into Jerusalem, and then after he went in, they thought he was going to be crowned king. Didn't happen. Not only did that not happen, but a turn of events happened, and he was arrested, and then he was beaten. He was convicted of awful crimes that he didn't commit. Then they crucified him and buried him. Now, they don't even know where his body is. Not only that, but 
some strange things have been going on in Jerusalem. Mary Magdalene says she, she saw Jesus alive. And Peter and John, they said they saw an angel in the empty tomb. They didn't even know what to think. What was all this craziness? Well, as they walked and talked, this man appeared with them and started walking beside them. It was Jesus. But they didn't know who he was. As he walked and talked with them, he asked them what they had been talking about and why they looked so sad. Well, as they walked and talked, they said, what do you mean? Why do we look so sad? Have you not heard what happened to Jesus of Nazareth? He says, well, what things? Cleophas looked at Jesus and he says, where have you been? They did awful things to Jesus. He was such a wonderful man. He was beloved by God and by man. He performed miracles and he was a prophet. He was wonderful. But they treated him like a criminal. They tortured him and they crucified him and they buried him. Now we don't even know where he is. Well, Jesus said, oh, how silly these people are. Don't you remember when Jesus was alive, when he was walking with you, that he told you all of these things were going to happen? He showed you in the scripture the prophets had prophesied about it all. Don't you remember? Can you imagine Jesus teaching you Bible study? That's what happened as they walked and talked, but they just didn't know it. Jesus was teaching them all about what the Old Testament prophets had written about him. As they got closer to Emmaus, it was getting later in the day, and Jesus was going to continue going on, but they asked him, please stay and eat with us. So he decided that he would sit down and eat with them. Well, as they sit down to eat, Cleophas said, sir, would you please pray and, and thank the Lord for this meal? See, they still didn't know who he was. He said, of course he would. So Jesus prayed, and after he prayed, he broke the bread, and he passed it to each of them. Guess what happened? Their eyes were opened. They realized who he was. They recognized Jesus. As soon as they recognized him, poof, he's gone. He disappeared right from in front of them. Well, they started talking, and they said, don't you realize that our heart just burned as he talked about Jesus and the prophecies? Do you think they just sat there and waited after, after Jesus disappeared? Do you think they just sat there? Of course not. They got up and they took off running. They ran all the way back to Jerusalem, that whole seven miles, just so they could tell the disciples what they had seen. Now, as they got there, the disciples ran out to meet them. They all went up to the upper room. They couldn't wait to tell them what had happened. But everybody was talking all at once. The disciples said, guess what? Jesus appeared to Peter. And Mary Magdalene said she saw Jesus. Well, of course, the couple that had come from Emmaus said, well, yes, we got to talk to him, and he walked and talked with us. Of course, they're all talking at once because they were so excited that their Messiah was alive. As they're standing there talking, of course, they had closed the doors and locked them up and closed all the windows because... They were afraid of the religious leaders who had tortured Jesus so horribly. As they're standing in this locked up room and all talking at one time, guess what happened? Jesus appeared. One of the disciples said, look, there he is right there. He, he's, he's in the room with us. Well, they were surprised, and then all of a sudden they were scared. How did he get in here? The doors were all locked. The windows were all closed. Is it a ghost? They were afraid because they thought a ghost had appeared to them. They didn't really believe that it was Jesus. Jesus said, why are you scared? It's me. Don't you recognize me? Come, feel my hands. Why do you think he wanted him to feel his hands? He says, look, touch my side. Why do you think they wanted him to touch his side? Remember, his hands were nailed. His feet were nailed. His side had the spear poked into it, so he wanted to show them, look, it's me. Check it out. You see the holes in my hands? You see the holes in my feet? You feel the hole in my side? It's me. They're still not quite convinced because they think it can be a ghost. So Jesus said, hey, do you have anything to eat? Well, I don't know about you, but I've never seen a dead person eat. And I don't think anybody has ever seen a dead person eat, so... 
Jesus sat and he ate some broiled fish with them, then they realized this truly was Jesus. He is alive. After he had convinced them that he was alive by eating some fish with them, he proceeded to remind them about the Bible stories that he had taught them while he was alive. He said, don't you remember all of the things the prophet said? Don't you remember that they said I was going to be born and come to this earth and be tortured and killed to die for your sins? He says, you've watched that prophecy get fulfilled right in front of you. And Jesus was gone. Well, one of the disciples named Thomas wasn't there with them when all of this happened. And so when he came back, they're all excitedly telling him, Thomas, Thomas, guess what happened? Jesus is alive. We got to see him. He was in this room. We got to visit with him. Thomas said, eh, I don't know about that. I don't think I really believe that unless I get to see him myself, unless I get to put my fingers in his hands and in his feet, unless I can put my hand in his side. See, Thomas was doubting. He didn't believe that the other disciples were actually telling the truth. He was doubting that Jesus was really alive because he hadn't gotten to see him with his own eyes. He hadn't got to touch him with his own hands. About eight days later, the disciples are in that same room, and Thomas is there with them this time, and all of a sudden, guess what happened? Guess who showed up in the middle of the room, just like he did the last time? You guess Jesus. You're right. There he is. He shows up right in the middle of the room. Thomas is there this time, and Thomas looks and cannot believe that he sees Jesus. Jesus said, Thomas, here, touch my hands and my feet. Put your hand in my side. Thomas didn't want to do that this time. You know what he did? Thomas instead fell down on his face in front of Jesus. He says, my Lord and my God. See, Thomas got to see Jesus. He didn't need to touch him anymore. He believed that he was alive. He believed that he was there. Jesus says, you know, Thomas, you believe because you can see me. But there are others who have never seen me who are going to believe. What do you think he's talking about? He's talking about me, and he's talking about you. See, we don't get to physically put our eyes on Jesus and see him. We don't get to touch the wounds in his hands or put our hands in the, in the side where he was speared. But we believe that he came to earth to die on the cross for us. See, Thomas, not only did he confess that Jesus was his Savior at that time, but he made him his Lord. He was a master of his life. He said, my Lord and my God. He looked to Jesus for everything, and that's what they want us to do. That's what Jesus wants us to do, is to look to him to rule our lives. Does that mean we should say, eh, I went to church this morning. Now I can do whatever I want later. No. That means that everything we do, we need to be thinking about Jesus and what he would have us to do so that we set a good example for others. I love this story because it shows that Jesus truly did raise from the dead. And it tells us that he fulfilled that prophecy in the Old Testament so that he could save us from our sins. What a wonderful thing. All right, before we wrap up today, we are going to say a prayer, and then we'll see you next time. Okay, bow your heads, close your eyes. What do we do? Button our lips, open our ears. All right, dear Lord, thank you for the story about the road to Emmaus, Lord, and for appearing to all those people to prove that you really did come back to life from the dead, Lord. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins, and, and thank you for preparing a place for us in heaven, Lord. We love you, and we thank you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. See you later.